In Keyforge, there is a very little used mechanic known as Poison. Poison essentially makes it so whatever damage is dealt by the attacking creature during a fight kills the victim of the attack, so obviously it's a pretty strong mechanic. It could be a tiny little 1 power creature such as Mooncursor, facing up against a massive 8 power troll, but since Mooncursor has poison, its 1 power would kill the troll during the fight. Poison wasn't seen very frequently in Coda, showing up on only 2 uncommon shadows cards, Mooncursor and Masses Asp, and 1 rare untamed card, Inca the Spider. Masses Asp has 3 power and skirmish along with its poison, making it a surprisingly frightening creature to encounter. Mooncursor only has 1 power in Skirmish, but also has the fight effect of Fight, Steal 1 Ember, which makes up for the 2 less power compared to Masses Asp. Then there's the wacky Ink of the Spider, who, left undealt with, is a remarkably potent stunning threat, having the ability to stun any high value target it wants, or the same target over and over, although the 1 power makes him really easy to get rid of via direct damage or removal. Then Age of Ascension came around, and Poison was made even more scarce, with only 2 cards having it. Inca the Spider was still around, and new to the game was the disc creature Spider. It has 2 power in Skirmish, but only gains poison when attacking enemy flank creatures, making it literally just a worse version of Masses Asp. Spider definitely has its uses, but I wish Masses Asp hadn't been replaced by something simply worse. Moving into Worlds Clyde, we saw much of the same. Inca the Spider stuck around, as did Spider. Newly introduced to the game, however, was Xenos Bloodshadow, one of the most outlandish creatures ever created. This guy has Elusive, Hazardous 6, Poison, and Skirmish, so he's practically impossible to fight into. What's meant to balance him out, though, is that he always comes with Toad, a 1 power creature that can't reap, but he's still pretty dang strong, especially with that Poison enhancing him even more. Mass Mutation finally got rid of Spider and Inca, while keeping around Xenos Bloodshadow and bringing back Masses Asp. It introduced two new Poison cards, the first of them being Wrath, one of the 7 deadly sins. Wrath not only has Poison, but Taunt and Skirmish too, 3 power, 3 armor, and reads fight, for each friendly send creature, and rage and enemy creature. This is one of the best taunt creatures out there, offering phenomenal protection and offensive value with its poison and fight effect. And since he's one of the sins, he'll come with a few other sins as well that are definitely worth protecting. The other poison card that was introduced in Mass Mutation is the Shadows Artifact Doom Sigil, which reads each creature gains poison. If there are no creatures in play, destroy Doom Sigil. This card is terrifying on paper, and can result in creatures swinging into each other and just obliterating each other, no matter their power. I think it's a very skill testing card. Its effectiveness really depends on the deck it appears in, and on the timing it gets played with. Now we move on to Dark Tidings, and this set went crazy with the poison. It scrapped every poison card that we'd ever seen before, and introduced 5 new creatures with poison, and 2 others that had the potential to interact with poison based on what existed in the battle line. In Shadows, we have Sea Urchin, a Dark Tidings favorite that offers all sorts of value. If the tide is high, you get to steal one ember, but if it's low, you get to capture onto it, and with it having poison, it can be a nuisance to deal with. In Sanctum, we have Sir Bever's Evil Twin, with 1 power and 5 armor. The 5 armor combined with its poison gives it the ability to fight into some larger creatures without taking any damage, which I think can be a decent substitute for the skirmish that Massus Asp or Mooncursor offered. In Unfathomable, there are three creatures with poison. First is Fugru, who makes your opponent draw one less card during the draw card step. Second is Horrid Sinan, a super vanilla four power poison creature. And third is Horrid Sinan's evil twin, who only has two power but has taunt accompanied with its poison, making it a pretty dangerous form of creature protection. And finally, in Logos we have two creatures that don't inherently have poison on their own, but can gain access to it based on what's in your battle line. First is Captain Cressage, who reads, While you control another creature with Elusive, Taunt, Poison, or Skirmish, Captain Cressage gains that keyword. In a perfectly ideal situation, Cressage would be a 6 power Taunt creature with Poison, Elusive, and Skirmish, making him the ultimate keyword conglomeration. However, that rarely happens, and often ends up with just one or two keywords. Lastly is Captain Cressage's Evil Twin, who causes each creature to lose their keywords. Depending on the deck he appears in, he can do a lot more damage to yourself than the opponent, but sometimes Cressage's Evil Twin can be exactly what you need to make it easier to eliminate a threat, including negating poison. So that was a quick overview of all the cards with poison in Keyforge, but a question that arises is, how has the mechanic of poison evolved from set to set? I think I have an answer, and it's that poison really shifted from a combat mechanic to more of a defense mechanic. Here's what I mean. In the early days, mainly those of Coda and AoA, you saw Poison paired with creatures that wanted to fight. Masses Asp, Mooncursor, Spider. Later into the game, you saw Poison paired with creatures that more or less just didn't want to be touched. Fuguru, Sea Urchin, with Xenos Bloodshadow being the most extreme example of this. We even see this in creatures like Horde Sinan. Sure, you could use him to fight and take out a bigger creature, 
but you could also perhaps capture Ember onto him. In this case, his poison is essentially sending the message, don't touch me. I have your Ember, but if you fight me, you die too. Inca the Spider is a prime example of this as well, offering turn after turn of stun value with only poison to protect it. Really, creatures with this sort of defensive poison exist more for their effect, not so much for the fact that they're poisonous. It's interesting to me to see how poison went from something so combat-oriented to something so protection-oriented. With Horde Sinan's evil twin, without direct removal, you need to fight into him, most likely losing your creature in the process, to access the creatures on either side. As I mentioned before, Xenos Blood Shadow is the epitome of poison's defensive nature, especially seeing it combined with Elusive and Hazardous 6, tying it with Chenille for the most hazardous creature in the game. Clearly, Wrath is the blazing exception to this timeline, furiously fighting and enraging creatures while simultaneously protecting the creatures on either side of it. Oh, and Doom Sigil 2, I guess. I suppose that exists as well, and that just throws everything for a loop, pretty much making all power values completely meaningless. Another question that arises, however, is how viable is poison as a defensive mechanic? Or as an offensive mechanic, for that matter. Unfortunately, as a defensive mechanic, I think poison is actually pretty weak. And the big reason for this is that so many of the creatures poison appears on as a don't touch me mechanic have such little power. Fuguru, Sea Urchin, Inca, 1 power. Horrid Sinan's Evil Twin, 2 power. And they don't get much higher than that, with regular Sinan and Xenos Blood Shadow only having 4 power apiece. There's a plethora of direct removal in Keyforge, hundreds of cards allowing you to deal direct damage or destroy targeted creatures, or anything along those lines, making it so those aforementioned poison creatures simply don't stick around for long. They can be dealt with too easily outside of fighting. And even in decks where you don't really have any direct removal, there are plenty of bland, vanilla creatures out there that don't really provide much value that you can use to fight those poison creatures. Just a few examples are Infomorph, Kulf the Quiet, Bonesaw, or Tamlidge Steelheart. And that's not to mention the fact that poison cannot penetrate armor, of which there is also plenty of, especially in Dark Tidings with cards like Larry of the Lake. And that's also not to mention Skirmish, of which there is also plenty, and keeps you from taking any damage in return when you fight a poisonous creature. Creatures with poison as an offensive mechanic have the same shortcoming. Moon Cursor with 1 power, Massus Asp with 3, Spider with 2. They can be dealt with outside of fighting quite easily much of the time. However, in my opinion, offensive poison is actually a little scarier than defensive poison. When your opponent has offensive poison, you know they will be intentionally using their creatures to take out yours, probably your big, stronger creatures with lots of power. However, the most frightening powerful effects usually belong to the smaller creatures. Think of all the witch creatures, for example, or world's clyde star lions and logos creatures. In addition, those must-kill threats are usually protected by something else, like elusive or armor, so a single fight with a tiny poison creature probably won't get you the result you want. Offensive poison is really there so your tiny creatures like Spider can take out behemoth creatures like Grogans. But in the end, even though poison certainly isn't the ultimate Keyforge mechanic that everyone wants to see in their decks, it's still not bad at all. Placed correctly, it can add extra value to creatures that enhance them in some pretty dynamic ways. Taunt creatures are there to protect the creatures on either side of it from being fought, forcing you to fight the taunt creature first, so adding poison to it, as in the cases of Wrath or Horrid Sinan's Evil Twin, is a deadly extra bonus. As another example, take a creature like Mooncursor, who's essentially a variation on other Shadows creatures like Umbra or Dodger. Like those two creatures, Mooncursor wants to fight to steal, and the poison is once again an added bonus, not only stealing, but also having the ability to take out massive targets. So those are my thoughts on poison. I think it's a really interesting mechanic, even though it's not the strongest, and I'm curious to see what sort of value it'll add to later sets. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on poison, I'm always interested to hear your guys' insight. Thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again in the next one. See you later.